Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, from this video onwards, I want to start a new playlist that is related to AR, ML in 5G or 6G wireless. Uh, so especially in this video, what I want to talk is why you are designing the AR, ML algorithms. What are the parameters or constraints that you should look at? Okay. Basically, what are the challenges that are involved in designing the AR, ML algorithms? Because what uh, we are coming across is, especially right now in 2023, release 16 is going on and in 2024 onwards we will be going for release 19 and here itself uh, it is welcomed in GBP that people can propose or companies or vendors can propose AML algorithms okay so so if uh, the various companies are proposing AML algorithms then we will see what are the challenges that they would be facing in designing these AR ML algorithms or we can say what are the things that they will keep in their mind while designing these algorithms okay so now one more point I want to mention is from release 19 onwards we will be I think 3GP would be encouraging to provide or to come up with the 6G requirements and it will go on for a couple of years and then later on uh, based on the requirements uh, studies will happen and then further uh, for a couple of years uh, this study will happen um, so we can say 2026 say this is uh, 2028 and then after 2028 onwards maybe 2029 onwards uh, the actual 6g uh, specifications uh, will be coming out okay so now let us get into the main topic so the first thing is as we know that Latency is a big problem and we are going for um, better and better latency uh, moving from 4G to 5G, right? So, thing is that while designing the AI or ML algorithm, one should keep in mind that the signal processing, okay, signal processing uh, time complexity taken for uh, the algorithm should be as less as possible. We know that uh, um, AI or ML algorithm so would take a lot of time to uh, execute the things so so we should design such a way that uh, they actually take less time so uh, today we are actually we are using many hardware accelerators block or uh, customized ASIC chips in order to actually perform the operations much faster right so the proposed algorithm should perform equally well to the top the existing uh, uh, systems or it, it should perform better than that that is the goal so that uh, should be taken care so once we say that um, you know AL, AI or ML algorithms uh, should uh, should uh, execute much faster what can happen is there could be a compromise on accuracy so here comes the trade-off uh, between um, I would say signal processing time versus latency so why you are designing your algorithms to work much faster okay uh, we should also ensure that your accuracy is not compromised because sometimes it might uh, um, uh, sometimes what happens to execute some a or ml uh, uh, models we would need some three layers or four layers okay in the a or ml algorithm um, so so then only we will get uh, better accuracy maybe like um, greater than 96 percent accuracy and things like that but if we try to reduce the number of layers we can perform the operations much faster in which case uh, the accuracy may, might be compromised so that should not happen so a, a proper trade-off should be considered between the signal processing time and the accuracy and the accuracy should be such a way that it is not performing bad than the existing current algorithms that are present whether it could be in 5g or 6g okay so it is expected that it performs equally well in fact it, it should perform better than the existing algorithms okay that is the second thing that we should keep in our mind while designing AI or ml algorithms what about the third one okay let's say once you are designing the AI or ml algorithm then comes whether it is a uh, supervised or not supervised right so let's say it is a supervised and we have got a training phase so one of the challenges here is um, for the training phase uh, the challenge is to get the training data okay because there are many scenarios uh, 
uh, which are applicable and we should ensure that uh, the algorithm is trained for various uh, um, scenarios okay mm, so getting such a training data is difficult uh, that is one point because let's say um, the deployment could be uh, in urban area where there are a lot of buildings and things like that this is one scenario where it could be uh, in the hill station uh, so that is another uh, another scenario or where it could be uh, near a lake or near a ocean uh, so where we have got uh, uh, water okay we can say lake or sometimes it could be a combination of hill station and the water or lake or sometimes it could be a combination of all these three things so our algorithm should be trained uh, for all these all these cases uh, so getting the training data for all these cases is uh, uh, somewhat difficult uh, uh, that is one point let's say even if you are able to get it now the thing now the question is how long you are going to train uh, uh, train your algorithm so 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 the next question is training duration so it should not happen that uh, the training itself is taking very long time so the training should happen much faster uh, okay so the training phase uh, should be as much uh, less as possible so that uh, that uh, so that the algorithm can be quickly deployed in, in the real field so that is another uh, challenge uh, that we have here then uh, so what other challenges we, we will get so another point could be that uh, we should have since uh, i was mentioning right that we have got different scenarios uh, uh, so the thing is whether a single algorithm would work across all the scenarios or not so basically it is expected that the single algorithm okay whichever model it could be that should work for all the kind of scenarios okay um, then uh, it is uh, it is a more efficient one uh, so that is another challenge which we will have it's not like okay for one scenario i will use one kind of algorithm for another scenario i will use another kind of algorithm that will become you know more complex uh, even to debug the system and things like that so then then what else can it happen because see the thing is that when we talk about the training phase we need to get the data uh, we need to get the data from simulations one thing is we can get the data from simulations again if you are taking from the simulations we are assuming certain kind of model today also uh, we are assuming certain kind of model for the channel right uh, so pgpp has specified many channel uh, many models like td um, tdla tdlc things like that but uh, but in practice the actual behavior of the channel could be something different okay so simulation is one thing the second thing is for the training data can we get it from uh, the real field real field can you can we use the real field data and extract okay that would be more closer to what we, what we are looking for or since we need data from the real field which which would be again a little bit difficult uh, the third point is can we do something like uh, uh, train train uh, uh, train the algo on the fly okay which means that once you deploy your uh, uh, system in the field then with the existing uh, um, with the existing data that is received uh, can we train the algorithm so if we can bring such a bit of mechanism then that will be more efficient and uh, and uh, and it can perform better okay and of course uh, here again one more challenge is uh, even if you are trying on the on the fly uh, the training uh, uh, time or training duration should be as less as possible okay i hope uh, uh, you got all these things then what other challenges that uh, uh, we would get okay let's say we are able to uh, so we are able to um, come up with ai or ml algorithm which can be uh, trained uh, faster and things like that but now question is as i was talking about uh, even uh, the signal processing time we should also talk about uh, uh, the resource consumption so whether it is going to take uh, too much resources or not 
so uh, whether it is taking more number of cpus or gpus and things like that so if it is taking more number of resource again that will not become a, a very efficient one uh, even if it is taking more number of uh, resources it will also lead to uh, more power consumption and today we are talking about uh, uh, talking about the concepts uh, uh, related to energy efficiency right so it should be much energy uh, much efficient in terms of energy consumption uh, that is another thing which we need, which we need to keep in our mind so this is about the uh, resource consumption then coming to the point as i was also mentioning that if you make your a or ml algorithm more complex then it becomes very much difficult uh, to debug okay so there should be a proper tools or proper mechanism that also should be defined to debug these algorithms uh, uh, so that uh, uh, your uh, um, on field problems can be solved much faster and uh, there is no problem in providing a good service so this is also we should keep in our mind while designing the ai or ml algorithm then in terms of okay in in terms of i was talking in terms of resource consumption right more the resources things will become bulkier so that is also another point we need to think because today's system like if you talk about even mobile phone or even your base stations they are they are uh, uh, you know occupying very less space so so we should actually occupy very less space it should not uh, the system should not become bulkier that is and and all these things are also uh, directly or indirectly related to the cost okay so if you use some algorithm and that is very costly and if you are going to increase the price of your uh, product uh, then that is also not a good thing so we should uh, ensure that all these things are taken care while designing the ai or ml algorithms so right now whatever i have spoken is with respect to uh, with respect to mainly um, physical layer uh, l1 perspective okay so so the same thing the some of the some of the constraints which i have spoken or some of the challenges which i have spoken will also be applicable at the higher layers or at the at the core network side okay so i hope you got this these concepts very well i think i will wind up at this point um so if you are looking for more concepts uh, more relevant topics related to ai ml in 5g 6g in the in the future please do subscribe to the channel uh, thank you very much have a great day bye